Hello everyone and welcome to the next episode of Sky Gardens. We are already in episode number 6 and today's build uh, of the Komodo Dragon Habitat is going to be very interesting because it basically sets sails for the next couple of episodes which are uh, hopefully filling up this um, terrace even more. And I really want to say that uh, you guys are still um, kind of asked and uh, kind of open hopefully to bring in more of the blueprints for the other skyscrapers that are in the environment because that's what I will need in the last episode which is then finishing up this all and you will all get your little um, you know it's almost like a memorial that I'm going to bring in uh, of all the people that contributed a skyscraper they will get something uh, on the sky gardens I'm gonna do in the next episode uh, it's, it's gonna be very cool I, I figured a way of, of doing something really nice and uh, I will show this in the real time part of uh, today's episode which will be in the end because actually the time lapse is quite short I must say mainly because I did a bit of off-screen work where I didn't record um, for once because I forgot at the beginning but also I was just in such a flow uh, I put the music on and when I figured I didn't record I was like okay come on just screw it uh, just finish it up before you record again to make sure that this is all nice and, and set up and I think it's fine um, because that's um, how it is sometimes and the progress is really cool it's really great and to be honest um, there was such a mess going on while building uh, it would have been a very weird time lapse indeed now I'm happy that I did not even have to cut it out because it didn't exist as a time lapse so that was a kind of a win-win situation and you still have a decent length in today's episode mainly well, because I'm just going to uh, yeah, have this little real-time part at the end where we are also going to talk about the next episode. So in case uh, you are always looking forward to what's up next, uh, make sure to check the real-time part at the end because that's where we are going to talk about this. Anyways, um, let's talk a little bit about what this Habitat's idea is about and uh, my, my thinking behind this. Now, the, the main idea um, with the Komodo Dragon was to have a bit more of an open field, uh, which is not as overgrown as the other habitats we've done so far, because the Komodo Dragon um, is actually living in a little bit more open spaces, uh, some more rocky environment and, uh, you know, very close to the sea and, you know, they have some water actually where they're swimming. To be fair, this one over here, this habitat is, you know, just meeting the requirements of the in-game animal and, you know, this might be one of these... Uh, single elements in the uh, sing, single animals in the game I should say um, that potentially have actually a way too low um, land requirement if you ask me so some of the animals have a huge requirement uh, if you take for example the uh, jaguars jaguars have a insanely big requirement from the game like minimum requirement uh, but in fact they, they kind of seem even to be lost if you go for a big habitat for the jaguars while the komodo dragons um, they have a fairly small requirement if you ask me uh, in comparison to what they have in real life and uh, how they would be moving and sometimes they're just even like running and swimming quite a bit uh, in the habitats and so I knew that this one over here is potentially one of the most animal unfriendly versions I will need to do because I want to somehow uh, save the space on on the sky garden so uh, I'm fully aware of the fact that this is not really the best habitat at all like in my imagination though um, this whole entrance building over here would give them some indoor space on a lower level uh, I think this is just kind of what we need and I am fully I'm, I'm fully aware of that it would also be necessary in a real life scenario because that is way too small but I could actually think that you know one level lower in the actual hotel there could also be like an indoor area where you have some heaters and stuff to give them some uh, privacy land uh, to relax which I in fact didn't build but just this was my idea behind this so I could just kind of justify why this is a bit smaller <laughs> now um, it, as I said it's just meeting the in-game requirements of land so the animal would not be unhappy with the welfare turned on uh, but it's not necessarily like the most happy animal in the world so um, that's kind of it and yeah what I was doing then with the building and I was uh, part of the habitat idea is that I wanted to integrate that into the entrance building of this sky gardens area now I'm still not fully aware of if I want to only have this entrance or if I may even do a second entrance on um, one of the other big pillars of the hotel I might just 
keep the one entrance here though to make sure that people spread across the area nicely and go to the left and to the right so um, I will talk a bit more about the layout in the real time part at the end because it's easier while showing it but yeah I wanted to make this entrance building uh, quite nicely as a little bit of an eye catcher and to make this one also go a bit higher have a nice little roof design which is a bit catchy and which has a little bit of a um, sail appeal to it I wanted to make like a little bit of a sun sail appeal which is going to be also seen in some of the um, viewing platform elements that are across the road on the other side of the habitat just to make sure that there is a little bit of a style element ongoing in this area and we already have some kind of sail appeal uh, with the viewing platform towards the giant ant eater now I wanted to kind of carry that through and just to you know not bring in too many different styles so in general the building style I'm going for here is very modernistic um, some Bauhaus influence um, but I just wanted to make also clear that this is just some modernism and some you know using a lot of concrete pad with some uh, graffiti tones and some some plaster and and just kind of keeping that and enriching basically this little design with a lot of planters uh, rooftop gardens and just some metal uh, just in, in, in terms of making this really go in line with the overall hotel design so I'm not like not necessarily going with any kind of Asian or South American inspired build it should just be like a modernist um, uh, hotel design this is basically the whole idea about it and so I want to kind of make all the habitats go in line with this design idea and as you can see I'm always using some muted tones some grayish um, sometimes I'm gonna add like it's not like necessarily completely gray so for you maybe as a little hint if you if you do color work in planet zoo or general in in these kind of games it's very important to know a little bit about the colors themselves so gray is not always like fully white black scale now if you are doing gray please make sure to use also a very subtle um, color in it. Now, if you want to go for a very cooled down gray tone, which is most likely used in backstage areas and in, in kind of um, these areas where you really want to make sure it's only like a very desaturated gray, make sure to bring in a little bit of blue because blue is cooling the color down quite significantly and it makes the color look a bit more um, as you want to have it for indoor areas and stuff. So it casts the light a bit nicer. It makes it all a bit more toned down in terms of really getting this modern clean vibe to it. However, if you are going to be outside in a more sunny area and you want to make like a warm concrete wall feel, like something that is really that you would feel is in an area Area where you use the concrete also to be seen in a very modern build that wants to give uh, and give the board build like a little bit of character make sure to use a bit of uh, yellow in it uh, because the yellow tones it up a little bit and makes it a bit more warmer and then you can also go when you want to have it really warm and really go together with some you know let's say for example if you put it together with some warm colors uh, let's say some red and uh, purple and stuff like that so for example for Indian builds um, or for, for South American builds even, uh, make sure to bring in some orange red tones. And I'm really talking of very, very subtle, okay? So if you go to the color scale, make sure that you go all the way to the left and then just find your way slowly moving the little arrow to the right hand side make sure to choose the color like orange red blue however what do you want to do and then just slightly move it over and you will see there is a noticeable difference in there that makes the whole thing appeal a lot more nice and a bit more um, yeah for for actually the purpose you want to use it for so that's the main uh, idea behind that as you can see um, I am doing the same here with uh, basically all the all the different elements which you can see is um, uh, is using the uh, normal concrete pieces over here I basically cannot recolor them so I'm just adjusting the plaster pieces to this tone and uh, the in-game the in-game concrete has a bit of a slightly yellowish tint to it so you want to have like a bit of yellow in it um, that's how the in-game thing is I remember that in Planko uh, we had also the normal concrete one had a lot of yellow influence however the smooth concrete pieces had a lot of bluish uh, influence to them so this is how you how you can adjust the plaster pieces to concrete just 
as a little ex uh, excursion here if you are interested. Now, yeah, you can see I'm already doing some kind of detailing. You missed out on a lot of uh, basic build, I want to say, because as I said, I did this off screen and, and made this really aligned to everything. Uh, we are already doing the planters. And obviously what I also did is a little staircase out of three meter path. And I did exclude all of that because that was a huge struggle to achieve. As you know, there is this little trick to get three meter path done. Um, and yeah, it's, it's kind of a nightmare to do. But yeah, you can see also putting some little details in for, for the vibe, just some ambient speakers where you have some music, put down some seating elements. Um, I, I do have, say, I have to say though that I might just want to add a bit of uh, more shade even to the terrace, at uh, terrace over here, terrace, that's the word, um, because I felt it might be a little bit too much in the sun. However, I'm I'm just kind of, you know, trying to get the right feel of it. That's that's mainly what I want to do. Um, so I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not doing, uh, I'm not really too concerned that it's too much in the sun, but it, it, potentially it is. So, you know, anyways, let's head over into the real time part now and talk about what I've done so far. All right, so here we go. We are now in the box outside the habitat for too long. Oh, just, oh, well, I know what that was. Um, move, and now where's the trade center? There you go, go back. Uh, I did a little testing in the background. Okay, never mind. Now, um, this is uh, going to be the full area in uh, the next episode um, of the sky terrace, uh, terrace um, in the middle part. So the middle pillar is nearly done. Now I'm gonna explain a little bit what I did first before we then talk about the overall layout and the overall next additions because I definitely need your opinion on that and also your help as I already stressed at the beginning of today's episode. Now you can see a bit more in detail now what I did. This is just a little open area. We might be able to put some more plants in, uh, cover up this ugly backstage staff pass. This is as I just mentioned a few seconds ago, this is the three meter path um, for people to go up. Well. As you can see, guests are using it, and I just found this better because it um, fits this area a lot more with the three meter path instead of just going for a four meter, which would be too wide. And I think just saving some space here is really badly needed. Now we do have this roof design over here, as I said, where uh, we have a lot of these tuned down colors. This is again the a tiny bit more warm grayish color. Let's just move this glass piece quickly in because no, that should not stitch out there. Um, good. Now we um, we also went for a bit of a design over here. I did off screen and also I did, as you can see, the preparation of this habitat. I'm gonna talk about in a second. But yeah, we also have the sun sail design, uh, which mimics a bit what is on top here. So that one is uh, kind of carried through over here. And we do have these sun sails in here as well. And this building over here has uh, some kind of the shapes in the oval design as well. Um, yeah, this leaf is something different, but I think it all fits together really well already. And I think it's good to say we have six episodes that filled in that, uh, considering that the first episode was mainly building uh, the, the, the fooder, so to say, so the, the hotel itself. Um, I might want to say that it is kind of realistic to end this whole thing in, um, yeah, the next four episodes that we have 10 as the final episode and maybe just make a tour as a 11th one, uh, 11th one, that's the one you want to say. Uh, now, yeah, as I said, for the layout, I wanted to make this layout really flowing, okay, so that you can just go um, on the one hand side and just return on the other side and maybe have some connections in the middle. Now, I think, and this is where I need your help, I'm not, I'm not really stuck, I have some ideas in my mind. But just to finish off this area, I thought it would be cool to have some kind of, well, 10 meters might be a bit too much. Let's go down to eight, just give it a bit of a more narrow appeal and just have a little bit of a, a roundabout like this uh, to carry through the idea of the tour. So we might have the chance to have some bigger habitats on this side and on this side and maybe have a final habitat that uses this space over here, which somehow has to be integrated in a corner building. I'm not really sure how that should go, but I wanted to have like a building on both sides to kind of give a bit of a weight to both sides so that it kind of doesn't look like um, too much weight to the right hand side or to the left hand side. So maybe if we if we kind of make a building, this could be an inside habitat for an animal that potentially needs a bit more shade, um, while the other ones can still be on the outside. Now, as for the animals, I already decided to go in. What's going on here? Box outside of the habitat for too long. Wait, but I just did send you back. I don't know why you're not taken back. Wait, where are you? 
No, 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 this is not my, this is, this is actually my animal tab. Wow, how, pff, Jesus. Okay, so this is Jessica. She's in Trade Center, so what, what is that? Like, you're not. She, she definitely is not. I saw that. Okay, it, it might be just a little bug. Um, but yeah, so now as we, we will also have a look at this habitat in a second, but um, this habitat over here is already planned to be for the best tapir. Now, I wanted to integrate this into that habitat over here, but for some reasons, as we talked quite a bit about this in the last episodes, I cannot really integrate that because I would not be able to bring um, the keeper over to this side. And as soon as I connect this with that habitat via a bridge, for example, this bridge would, in, you know, also be traversable by the giant anteater and the capuchin monkeys, which is kind of shitty because then they will go into this area as well. And I want them to stay in here. So... Yeah, I would have loved to just open it up down here, you know, just open the glass up and just make sure that only the ant eaters can swim over and only the bird's tapir can swim over and then just give um, some kind of access for the staff members on this side. But since we only can have one gate, it's not gonna work and it's a bit of a pity because it would be cool to have all three animals in one uh, gigantic habitat that is connected by this dream of water. Now, as this is not possible, I will make this habitat solely for the birds tapir and kind of just imagine that this is a connection and they could be swimming over. In fact, they can, but I mean, that's how it is. So that's gonna be the birds tapir. And then on this side over here, we have, uh, this is where I will bring in the dedication for you guys, but this whole area will be a bit of a garden. Uh, I'm even thinking to follow this path down here a bit more and like make an overhanging uh, overhanging viewpoint on this side so kind of mimicking this terrace here bring that over to the other side and then that's gonna be the peafowl habitat and by using the elephant grass i can make this really like a habitat for the peafowl where it's roaming around all this area without a major issue uh, yes, we will have a pretty crowded area indeed, so I will give them some privacy shelters somehow. I'm not too sure how I do it. And this will be like the memorial garden over here, where I'm going to put down uh, some cool little things where you guys can uh, check uh, your names. And this is why you guys need to still send me in your skyscrapers uh, that will be, as I said, uh, filled around this whole area. Now, <laughs> look at that. The lots, the lots, the lots. But I think the, view, the draw distance of the piece is kind of cool. So I want to fill in this frame later, you know. I just want to have like a bit of a city vibe here and there. I can definitely copy some buildings and just make them appear to be more than they actually are. But I think I need some solid 30 to 50 skyscrapers to make this like a believable area um, and I already have like 10 ish from you guys 10 ish 15 ish so it would be huge if you can still send in some skyscraper designs as I said they don't have to be like completely crazy just some simple skyscrapers that would fit uh, a city like Rio de Janeiro as I said or Buenos Aires so that's where you can get your inspiration from just to make sure that we add a little bit of context in the end okay so that is the idea and then I'm also putting like my idea is to throw all these um, little spawn points inside of the hotel so that actually the whole city is moving um, and I'm also thinking of integrating uh, some of the uh, rides into here so that we have some cars moving around I think that would be funny as well to just have some cars driving around the city um, even though these are just the, the safari cars but so we have some movement but anyways that's kind of talk of the future and now um, let's have a last look I love how the other janitor is just like cleaning up the by the way it's just like kind of throwing it down from here and then well, whatever I don't want to even know it uh, but yeah so this is the um, Komodo dragon habitat I'm just kind of a, a little fan of this habitat I don't know it, it has the kind of dune style over here where the dragon has to go up and then can go for a swim and uh, it has some little bunkers here to go down in as some shade it can go back into the into the little area to sleep. It has some, some enrichment items in here. Uh, so yeah, I think it's quite a cool combination of, uh, of a very, very open habitat, but it still has some privacy areas to go into. You have this wonderful area to watch the whole thing over here from these benches. You can just chill down and relax and have a look what this dragon is about to do. And, uh, well, it's actually, oh no, it's moving now, it's moving, it's moving, it's running towards the food, see? I love it. The animation of these things is really gay, it really, really great, I really love it. Okay, I mean, obviously they were pretty hungry, it seems. Yum, 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 Ah, get a lovely big bite of meat. That is awesome. Just get your lovely meat. 
Hmm. Nom, 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 nom. Okay, never mind. So this is, um, as I said, this is the Komodo Dragon Habitat. I'm quite happy with it. Again, there will be the Peafowl and there will be the Bird's Tapir. This is what we do next episode. Maybe I'm even adding one more animal. And here's now my question. So there were so many, so many great ideas about which type of animals we want to get up here. And as I said, some of them are uh, being realized already. So for example, Komodo Dragon was a big request. Um, now we have, so the idea is we could have some orangutans up on here. However, I, I think I want to make sure that we do do some animals I haven't done so often lately. So what we could bring in here as well, I'm going to make some suggestions and you need to tell me uh, how, how you like it. So as for the animals I haven't done in a while, we could make like a really nice red ruffed lemur habitat as well. I think that would fit nicely in. We could also go and uh, do some work with uh, the um, uh, mandrel. Mandrel is something I could imagine doing. Now, if we go further down here, Pfall is going to be added. Um, we could also have flamingos, but I, I'm not sure if I want them. Now, uh, we will also add some of the tortoise uh, because they are pretty small. That's simply easy to add. Now, again, I'm, I'm not really sure which ones. Uh, we could also do the bonobo. Uh, if you guys um, are fine with that uh, and yeah, I think that's mainly about it And now I just need your recommendation of what you think we could also add in here and which different species you you see potentially being added um, Over here in this uh, area especially and that is that is my request especially what could go in here So that is for me the most relevant question What goes into this back area here because again, I need some kind of building style which um, Yeah guarantees some shade, but also uh, makes like an indoor habitat possible Maybe another big cat maybe Bengal tiger. Maybe I don't know so yeah Just let me know in the comments down below and we will decide upon that what we do in the next episode and also uh, let me know if and how you want to contribute with your skyscrapers, that would be awesome as well. And yeah, just have a wonderful Friday, have a wonderful weekend, guys. And we are going to see each other tomorrow in either uh, the wonderful Koali Zoo at the Ladies Channel or in my Yosemite, which will then be also public. Uh, later uh, and I can already say this is going to be awesome because it's gonna be the pygmy hippo dome so it's the first addition to the Yosemite Valley uh, tropical dome and I can only tell it's really cool it was a lot of a lot of stuff to do but it's turning out really cool so yeah in case you want to see that make sure also to tune in and if you haven't subscribed yet consider doing so because then you get notified and you can be still lazy and you will be notified and you know the drill anyways see you in the next one have a good time guys and goodbye